I think cooperatives combine the best attributes that attract people to social enterprise in a single model. You could say that cooperatives represent the purest form of social enterprise, and I hope that's not a contentious thing to say. Now, yesterday I was at a conference uh, organised by the Cabinet Office of the ES ESRC, it was full of academics, and they were, they were discussing, uh, as, as these conferences tend to, the, the definition of social enterprise. They were trying to decide whether social enterprise represented a hybrid form of enterprise uh, or an adjunct to the rest of the economy. And I was asked to sit on the panel and comment on this. And I said, look, I'm very, very sorry, but I am not, and we are not, an adjunct or a hybrid. <laughs> we are here for our own very good reasons. We define ourselves not in terms of what we're not, but in terms of what we are. And we, you know, and we, we, can, we don't need to reference ourselves to anything else. Um, so, uh, the other question they were asking is, is social enterprise defined by the behaviour and values of the organisation or by its structure? And my response to that was, well, your values determine both your behaviour and your structure. You start with the values, and the other things are actually symptoms of those, as far as I'm concerned. Now, what, what is it about a problem that makes a problem attractive? First of all, I would say, the alignment of stakeholder interests. Co-ops exist to serve the needs of their members, who are generally the key economic stakeholders. And that means that business is neither exploitative on the one hand, nor paternalistic. It also creates that magic trust factor, which is a huge asset at a time when public confidence in business is probably as low as it's been for, for a generation. Fairness is another key attribute. All members in a cooperative are equal. This is not true of every kind of social enterprise, and it is the foundation of cooperative values. Engagement. The fact that stakeholders own the business means they're involved in the governance and in other ways through the democratic process. In consumer cops, that means user engagement, and employee, in employee <coughs> cops, it means employee engagement. Other enterprises would give their IT for this. Now, you might have noticed that last month, ASDA launched a scheme to involve its shoppers in something it was calling democratic consumerism. Um, Andy Bond, their chief executive, said they were going to launch this new thing called democratic consumerism, empowerment of consumers uh, to help make key businesses entering a new phase of openness and behind-the-scenes access, building foundations for creative collaboration between business and consumers. And I'm very pleased to say that the co-op movement responded saying, well, you know, if you want to know how that's done, you better come and talk to us for <laughs> 160 years. Why does ASDA want to do that? Because it creates a commercial advantage. But that's not for the benefit of the customers, that's for those of their shareholders. Which points to another advantage of being a co-op. It encourages things which are fundamentally good for business, like talking to your customers and staff. So co-ops are also inclusive. Now, not everyone on this platform, I'm afraid, can invite everyone here to come and join us. Uh, we can. Transparency. In many businesses and organisations, power is exercised in a non-transparent way. In a co-op which is true to its values, it is clear. Stability is another factor. Businesses, the co-ops, have a low likelihood of being bought out by investors with another agenda. If the constitution is well written, it should be virtually impossible to demutualise a cooperative. Values. Now, uh, the cooperative movement worldwide has codified a clear set of shared values and principles. Uh, and, and these, uh, these you know, like, they're well known, you can look them up. Uh, Self-help, self-responsibility, democracy, equality, equity, solidarity. These are the key things, with the ethical values added on of honesty, openness, social responsibility, and caring for others. And there's a, a whole set of principles as well. I won't, I won't read them all out, but they're, they're, they're fundamental to what cops are about. Now, these are tried and tested values and principles. They're good ones, though, as well. They're common sense. They're based on fundamental human values. I haven't actually met anyone who disagrees with them. And you wouldn't set up most organisations in, in, in our society, it was a club or an organisation trying to achieve something, with very different values from that. You wouldn't say, well, we'll make it undemocratic, we'll give you four votes, and you three, and you two. Um, why should a business be organised any different, any other way? 